Alright you guys, uh, if you haven't guessed it by now, we're going to be doing a jump scare tutorial for you guys today. Um, it's pretty simple, just a few things you got to set up to do it. Um, I'll show you guys how I did this one really quick, but I'm actually going to make one from scratch for you. And uh, this one is actually another request. Um, so before we get into it, just make sure you click that bell icon to stay updated and subscribe for more tutorials because more are definitely coming. And if you guys have any... Uh, um, uh, tutorials you want me to do in the future just drop them in the comments and uh, I'll see if I can do them for you guys cool so basically this one what happens is uh, your player walks through this trigger here which uh, triggers this jump scare and when it triggers it's gonna look something like this so the zombies gonna come rushing around the corner and he's gonna be flashing on and off and uh, it's yeah super scary to say the least alright so let's set that up cool so I'm actually gonna do one over here in the beginning uh, so let me get my uh, player here, and I'm going to align him to view, get him over here, and let's just zero him out there. Alright, cool. Now one thing I, sh I will say about jump scares is uh, you don't want to overdo them, um, especially in the beginning of your game. I'm not going to actually put one here, I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes, but uh, yeah, you really want to kind of keep them low key like you want to especially with like psychological horror games you want to try to almost build up to them and not throw them in your player's face right away because uh, they can get overplayed and overused especially and uh, it just kind of takes away from the game but uh, having said that let's the one right here so what I'm gonna do is uh, go to game object 3d object and I'm gonna put a cube right here and let's put it I guess right where this pillar is where this objective is, that's probably a good spot for it. Um, let's take off the mesh renderer, we don't want that. Make sure box collider is a trigger. And let's just edit our box collider so that uh, the player has to walk through it. Kind of keep it the whole length of the walk walk uh, walkway here. And uh, let's, actually I'll do this side. I can see that, uh, there it is. Sometimes those pointers are hard to see. Perfect. Okay, so something just like that. Just to, uh, basically what's going to happen is our player is going to walk through this and uh, it's going to trigger trigger our jump scare. Uh, jump scare. Uh, so let's add a component and let's add, um, if I can spell right, that would be great. Jump scare trigger. Cool. So there's a few things that I really like about this. Um, the first is that you have some effects. So if you saw in that first one, when the player walks through it, um, there's like a shaky breath sound that happens which I'll add in later and there's some like camera effects so there's like a camera shake, there's a vignette, um, chromatic abrasion um, which is I think the camera shaking but uh, you can adjust the magnitudes basically how long the camera shakes, how, how hard it shakes um, really cool stuff or you can just take them off completely uh, personally I like having them on but uh, Cool, so let's add a uh, scared breath sound. I personally like the first one here. Um, so your player is going to start kind of heavily breathing when that jump scare happens. Um, and let's add a little stinger here. So let's uh, find one here. I think this first one's a good one. Let's just check it out. Yeah, that'll work. Um, you can add your own in there. Um, or you can use the preset ones that come with the asset. So I'm just going to use that for now. And let's rename this as our jump scare trigger. Cool. All right. Now we do need a few more things. Uh, let's add a uh, empty parent game object. And let's call this our actual jump scare. Jump scare, I'll put beginning. Um, I think I spelled the kidding right. Probably not, because I suck at spelling, as you guys know. Cool, and the reason we want to add an empty game object is because we're going to add our zombie, or whatever character you're using, as a parent to that object. Or, sorry, not a parent, a child. And I'll, I'll explain a little bit more why in just a second here. Um, but uh, here's our, um, okay, our jump scare trigger we want as a separate game object. So make sure your trigger is its own game object, and the... Uh, zombie itself is a child of an empty game object as well and um, like I said I'll explain why we have to do that in just a second 
Um, I think our zombie's a little bit too tall, so let me just uh, scale him down a little bit. I don't want Slender Man up in here, but <laughs> I don't want something super tiny. Uh, yeah, that should be good. Um, cool. So for our zombie, what I want to do is add a running animation to my zombie. So let's go to zombie animations, uh, in place, and in place run. Yeah, that's what I want. So let's drag and drop that there. Now, as you can see, we have a running in place animation. So as our zombie moves towards us, he's going to be running. Okay. And to actually get the zombie to run, um, we're going to have to move him from there to about, I'd say right here where our player is going to be. So let's create a new animation. I'm going to call this uh, jump scare the beginning. And let's animate this. Uh, so the first thing I like doing is adding a zombie is active property. Now you don't have to do this, but I think it's kind of cool having the zombie flash on and off on the screen. Um, and let's make this last, I don't know, about a second. So I guess right where one is is pretty good. I just delete those because I'm going to redo it anyway. Um, the first keyframe, I like having them off. And the second keyframe, I like turning them back on. Just to, uh, it's kind of like a... a like a double safety feature basically um, you don't want your player spawning and then seeing the zombie right here you want them to only show up when that uh, jump scare is triggered so basically for the first split second the first keyframe he's not going to be on and then he'll turn on right away so that's kind of like a, um, a safety feature to make sure that he's not showing up right away okay um, in the very last frame at one second I want to turn him back off so that way if you were to turn around or uh, whatever, you're not still seeing that zombie, he's going to be disappearing. Alright, cool. So let's animate this guy. So I'm going to click animate. And right... Uh, oh, actually, what I want to do is drag this all the way to the end. And I'm just going to turn him on now, just so I can see him. I'll turn him back off. And I want to get him to go right about here. So it's going to take him a second to go from here to there. Okay? And we're going to turn him back off. So as you can see, from there to there is going to be about one second. And I don't know, I guess every 10 frames will, uh, actually no, because one second is too long. Every, yeah, every uh, five frames I'll turn them on and off. So let's go to uh, five. And uh, so he was on there, so let's turn him off here. Turn him back on there. Turn him off here. And just kind of repeat this process until... Uh, you get all the way uh, to the end there. Like I said, you don't have to do this extra stuff. I just think it kind of adds. Um, it just makes it a little bit more scary, in my opinion. Cool, so this is what it's going to look like. Let's uh, stop animating and play that. Oh, yeah. Okay. That honestly might be a little bit too, f <laughs> too fast. Uh... You guys are uh, sensitive to flashing lights, then that might be a problem, but whatever. We'll keep it like that for now. All right, cool. So uh, now that we have this, what we want to do is go to our trigger. Um, actually, sorry. Go back to our uh, our zombie scare here. And we're going to add a animation to this because we actually need an animation. Uh, we don't want it to play automatically. Um, we want it to trigger. And on our list, we're going to find our zombie scare beginning. So let's go to project type in zombie scare uh, not in place what did I call it? oh jump scare not zombie scare uh, jump scare beginning I think that's it yep that's it right there so let's go to here and drag that there um, just to be safe I'll drag it up top too I don't know if you really have to do that um, one other thing you want to check um, you don't want this to loop. Um, you don't want them to keep going here, then back here, then here, then back here. Um, and let's go to debug, and let's make sure that this is marked as legacy. Um, because for some reason, at least in my experience, if it's not checked off as legacy, it's, it, it doesn't play. Um, for some, some weird reason. Um, and let's go to our uh, zombie here. His animation is in place run. And I want to make sure that this one does loop. So let's double click that. And yeah, that one loops, uh, which is the only animation you want to loop. So that's why we, we put the zombie as a child 
object of this is because we're actually animating two things. We're animating a zombie running. And uh, don't mind that he's up there. He won't be up there when we actually play this. Um, and we're, we're animating the uh, zombie moving towards us. Because since this animation, he's just running in place, we need something to bring him towards us. So that's why we have two animations there. Cool. Now the uh, jump scare trigger, we want to drag and drop our animation parent right there. So that's, what that's going to do is it's going to actually play this group of animations when we walk through that. Now the last thing we need to do is we need to uncheck our zombie because we don't want our zombie showing up until the animation calls for him to show up. So right now you can see he's not there. When we turn on that animation, um, he's actually going to show up and uh, um, show up on our screen and run towards us. Alright, so I think everything looks good. Um, we have our jump scare sound or heavy breath sound our animation which is this and we don't want it to play automatically and let us play this I'll, I'll, I'll play it with the lights on just so we can make sure it works That worked. Um, it was a little quick, but uh, that's no problem. Let me. Uh, it was almost too fast for you guys to see the uh, zombie running, which uh, might be a problem. But you guys can always just you know change your animation and slow it down a little bit. Um, I think one way to do that is actually in here. If we click on our animator, we can actually change the speed of this. Let me just change it to 0.5 and see if that makes any difference here. And let's play it one more time. This time with the lights off. Yeah, so pretty basic, but uh, it worked. If you guys can hear, now we're breathing pretty heavily. But uh, yeah, that worked pretty well. So that is how you guys uh, create a basic jump scare for your game. Um, if that helps you, like I said, uh, subscribe, hit the like button, and hit that bell icon to stay updated on the new tutorials I'm going to put out, and I'll see you in the next one.